Hello, folks, and welcome back to The Shack. This is Joe, N2DI, coming to you today with a bit of an odd video. I was sitting in my shack a few days ago hunting some POTA activations with my QMX, and I was having a hard time getting through. It turns out there were solar storms happening at that time, and they were killing propagation. On the desk in my shack next to my operating position is my Elecraft KXPA100 amplifier. I was fortunate enough to purchase one of these amps when they cost less than a house about eight or nine years ago. So I was looking at my amp and I was looking at my QMX and I was wondering if I could get them to work together. It turns out the answer is yes. And it's not that hard to do. So if you want to know how to get your QMX and your KXPA to play nice together, then let's get started. So the first thing that you need other than the QMX and the KXPA100 is a keying cable. That's the cable that sends a signal from the QMX to the amp to trigger the PTT. The cable that you need is an RCA to 8th inch mono jack. It's 8th inch or 3.5 millimeter on this end. If you want to make one of these cables, you need to connect the RCA tip to the 8th inch jack tip and the sleeves together on both ends. Let's confirm that with a multimeter. Okay, I've got my meter in continuity mode. So we're going to check tip to tip and sleeve to sleeve. Okay, so that's the pinout. That's it for the hardware. Now, some folks like to have a buffer in between their rig and their amp, so there's no direct electrical connection. The buffer is usually a box in between both ends of the cable that has something like an opto-isolator inside of it. An opto-isolator, for those of you who don't know, is something like a transistor, except it switches on and off using light, usually from an internal LED and some kind of light receiver. That isolates from a direct electrical connection. So if you're not comfortable doing that, then get a buffer. I'm just using a straight through cable. Once you have the cable, the next step is to make a configuration change on your QMX. It's the same exact change that I showed how to make on my MXPA50 video. The setting change is basically telling the QMX to ground out the PTT connection on transmit. That will ground out the keying cable and switch the amp into transmit mode. Now the thing is, to make that change, you can't just do it from the menu on the QMX. You have to attach a cable from your computer to the USB port to make the change. Consult the QMX manual for the details on how to make the connection, but in a nutshell, you connect the QMX to your computer with the USB cable and see what COM port that is. Then you use a terminal emulator, something like PuTTY, to connect to that COM port using the board rate specified in the docs. And then you just hit enter and you'll get the advanced menu. I'll cut in a screen recording to show you what it looks like. Go to configuration, then band. Now you'll see a bunch of columns of data for each band that your QMX supports. Go down to the line that says TXPTT grounded. Then set all your bands from disabled to enabled by hitting the E key on your keyboard and then use the arrow keys to move to the next band. Once they are all done, hit Control Q to quit. Now to connect the amp, first you'll connect your antenna to one of the antenna ports like Ant1. Then you connect the QMX to the RF in port. That's where the transmitter goes. Next, you connect the keying cable from the PTT jack on the QMX to the PA key port, the RCA port on the back of the amp. Now for this demonstration, I'm going to, instead of connecting it directly to an antenna, I'm going to put a power SWR meter with a dummy load on it on the antenna output so you can see how much power is coming out of the amp. Now your power output is going to differ from what I have based on how much power you're getting out of your QMX. I've heard some folks say they only are getting like two and a half or three watts out of their QMX and some people get five. So depending on that, that's going to affect your output power from the amp. The other thing I'm going to suggest is you switch this attenuator switch to in. That's going to put in a three decibel attenuator in line to cut the power down from your QMX into the amp. If you're not getting a lot of power out of UQMX, then you could switch that off, but I'm going to keep it on. And as you're going to see, I'm going to get over 80 watts. 
Okay, so I'm going to hook this all up and we'll be right back. All right, before we get started, let's check to see how much power I'm getting out of the QMX. So now the QMX is just attached to this meter and the meter just has a dummy load attached to it. So I'm, get, wow, I'm getting six watts out of the QMX. Okay, now we have the QMX connected to the amp and the amp is connected to the watt meter and the dummy load. Let's switch the amp on. Give it a second and you can see the ATT light lights up, which means that the attenuator is switched in. Okay, we're on antenna one. Make sure you're on the correct antenna and make sure your mode is set to auto. Okay, now the QMX is set for straight key mode. So we get a continuous carrier. Okay, so watch the watt meter when I put the key down. So we're getting about 82, 83 watts out. And there you have it. Okay, now the last thing I want to show you is how to trigger the tuner if you have a built-in tuner in your amp. My QTH antenna is an 84-foot random wire connected to a 9 to 1 on on. So it definitely needs a tuner. To trigger the tuner, first switch to the bandit frequency that you want to use in the QMX. Then go into the menu and select hardware tests and then tune SWR. Now at the screen here, what you're going to want to do is short press the tune button on the amp. Now press the menu button and it'll tune. That was it. It just tuned up. It's got about a 1.46 SWR according to the QMX and the amp says it's pretty close to a one to one. So when you hit that menu button, it's going to put out a continuous carrier to test the SWR, which will trigger the tuner in the amp. Okay, folks, so that was it. So that was how to connect a really expensive amp to a really inexpensive rig. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll get to them as quickly as I can. So from the shack of Joe, November 2, Delta, India, I wish you all good health and 73. Bye-bye.